this covers a lie. You are not carried on your hands. You are a maid. You are dirt. No one likes you. Not even your fellow maid. In order to support her poor family, the MC has to work as a maid in the house of the richest family in Tokyo in the Taisho era. And soon the head of the family plans to retire, but bequeath his fortune to only one of his six sons, who are all from different mothers and not really on good terms, neither with their moms nor with their siblings. The son who amuses him the most in the following month will be the sole inheritor of his legacy. Yes, he's not a nice old man, but he enjoys seeing others suffer. Thus the competition between the ambitious sons begins, some more eager and ruthless to obtain his position and some less. But in this course of events also the dark secrets of the family and their share in political intrigues comes to light. Starting off with a normal everyday life like being bullied by the sons of the family, the plot later thickens, getting to know the snobbish sons, their mothers and their family secrets. The oldest son is Tadashi, a banker who is cold and stiff and doesn't talk much. He is eager to obtain the heritage and pressured a lot by his ambitious mother, who desperately needs another fortune to spend. As he is cold and uninterested in a mere servant, there is nothing more enjoyable to see than him opening up and entrusting her with his problems and speaking normally to her, before he notices. And how he can't quite understand his feelings he has towards a useless servant. Especially the beginning of his route was quite cute, how he slowly opened up, though I later expected a bit more romance, because in the end he stayed cool-headed most of the time and told the most classical master-maid story, I think. The second son, Isami, is an officer, who thinks he can solve every problem by killing people and doesn't want to marry as he's fully committed to his country and serving his country. He's easily angered and doesn't even look at the MC. All he can offer is scorn and disdain, which goes so far as asking the MC to kill herself. Problem solved. I think he was the toughest nut to crack. But the reward is even sweeter. Him starting to take an interest in the MC, or hearing stories of his mother, how he always was in love with Snow White as a kid and always wanted to kiss the sleeping princess. This is the kind of foreshadowing I like. I think his route was the most romantic and dramatic to me, as he turns out to be quite the emotional type and rash, just like his name. He is easily angered, but once he has set his eyes on something, he won't let go of it. The third son is the flirt and part-time geisha Shigeru. He's soft-spoken with such soft features he can work as a geisha, just like his mother. That of course makes him look down upon by his elder brothers, but Shigeru isn't really interested in all these family affairs, but tries to live his life as freely as he can. Him being the most gentle of the brothers, I enjoyed his love story the most, which felt fragile like a butterfly. And at the end I rooted so much for them too, that I actually screamed at my switch. <laughs> the fourth son, Susume, is a gentle police officer, who is nice to everyone, including servants. But as so often, two nice guys are a bit suspicious and might actually be hiding something underneath the nice mask. I expected the nice guy to be boring, but to my very surprise, he was not. On top of murder threat he receives, he has to figure out who he is, whom to trust, and what his feelings towards Hado are, and how he can move on afterwards. The fifth son, Hiroshi, is a little inventor. He likes crafting small devices like a punching clock, which he immediately surprises the MC with. <laughs> Apart from that, he is friendly to her though, from the beginning and the first to notice her qualities. He is the sweet grandchild of the Prime Minister, who is the center of the political conflicts. So Hiroshi is to be sent abroad next year. In his route, you get together with him quite early as he's like so naively childish, he just like immediately proposes. <laughs> but then you need to figure out how you can make a relationship between a master and a servant work and on top how to deal with his studying abroad. The youngest son is the bully Tsundere brat Masashi. He might be the worst bully of them all, always saying how much he hates servants, that she's trash who picks up trash, which irony, and hence set it as his most important goal in life to make her quit. Because he loves her, hates her the most. That is of course until his I want to make you quit turns into you are only allowed to quit when I am the reason. Oh, cute. Or he drags her away from his father taking her hand. Though he's one of the most severe tsundades I've seen so far, I loved him all along. I mean it's interesting how grateful you become if the character first starts out unbelievably rude and always bullies you. So you're then happy once he's just normally rude and take that as his love confession basically. 
The only voice actor I knew and was super excited about as soon as I heard him is the same voice actor as Young in Pure Fjorde or Peter in Keep It Parasite. And of course, without a doubt, he did a fabulous job voicing this Brad Masashi. But I must say I adored all the voice actors, though I don't think you hear them very often. The music was classic, but nothing that really stood out to me. Though the longer I played, the more it kind of made me dance. <laughs> But way more interesting was the design of the CGs by the same artist who worked on Café Enchanté, Cupid Parasite and Jako no Laila. But the art in Hanayaka Nariwa Gaichi Zoko looks nothing like it. The colors are very muted and almost look like from old pictures. And at first sight I kind of thought the style was ugly. <laughs> but the more I played it, the more it grew on me. And I came to appreciate the kind of lo-fi art style. <laughs> I think it's very unique and now I want more of it. There are also little details added, like falling cherry blossom or leaves in the autumn or falling snow or when it's cold you see the cold breath of the characters whose mouths are moving. And similar to the sprites and pop encounter the artist also worked on, it's noteworthy we actually have an Otome game with older guys. The two oldest sons are in their 30s and they actually look like it. No baby faces, no soft features, but rugged manliness. <laughs> So the art for me was no love at first sight, as it might have more of an underdog taste, but I definitely ended up liking it. The beginning of the game is actually a bully parade with heavily triggering topics. You'll be mistreated, called trash or even asked to harm yourself. Definitely not a laughing matter. So I would say in the beginning the game overstepped big time. But luckily the daily bullying only fills the first hours of the game and it becomes more a slice of life made game afterwards. Told in little episodic stories and the MC's bright, naive and yet lively character makes the dreadful everyday life a lot easier to bear. But it's really interesting to see how the focus shifts from her to the family because life of a maid is not about her but the family and the people she tends to and conversations she overhears coincidentally. In that regard it feels realistic but also prevents a cohesive narrative in the beginning of the game because it seems more like a collection of short stories from different points of views. And that feeling like a maid is enhanced by the gameplay elements. You have to raise your maid stats in order not to get fired at the end of the month by scheduling your activities. And in your free time you can walk around the mansion to take on fetch quests and collect some extra goodies. Scheduling stat raising is compulsory but doesn't really pose a challenge. Except maybe for the first month, but afterwards it's not really a problem. So doing the chores just felt like a chore to me. <laughs> the RPG-like fetch quests in the mansion on the other hand are purely optional and they could have been cute but you only earn some extra goodies and it's kind of hard to navigate through the mansion without the map at first and without the ability to run because maids don't run on the floor. I get it but <laughs> that just led to me completely ignoring this part of the game, honestly. As I'm generally not a fan of gameplay and Otome games anyway. But the closer you come to the character roots, the more the conflicts about who will become the next heir and the political intrigues around the Prime Minister thickens. And it's fun to pick up the little hints throughout each character route and it's highly recommended to play from the oldest to the youngest son, so you can pick up all the hints along the way until the most revelations are in Masashi's route. In their character roots. Every character struggles with their role in the family, to find their place in the world and find out what they really want, while figuring out what they feel towards the MC. You can't feel love towards a servant, right? She's just useful and I want to own her. So while the first half of the game, the long common route mixed with the character scenes of the character you choose to pursue, felt a bit generic, pointless and almost boring. And I was wondering why people even liked that game so much that it got ported from the PSP to the PS Vita to the Switch and has two fan discs, if I'm not mistaken. But I then understood the appeal of the game in the second half of the playthrough, when the conflicts become more intense, of the son's role in the family, and of the feeling of being a bird in a golden cage. Only being used for the family, the political intrigues and of course figuring out what they feel towards the MC. And how to make such forbidden love between master and maid work out. Not only does the relationship between Haru and the LI develop, but she also influences the relationships between the brothers, so you have a lot of funny, lovable like family scenes and she helps them figure out their relationship to their mothers. Overall, I wouldn't say the story is too romantic and the zero C ranking is actually for blood and violence and not romance because 
We are apparently in a day and age where killing your opponent is the most convenient way to end a conflict, but still the love development in each root felt cute and natural, even if rather innocent. But some characters still had some more passionate scenes. And though I'm usually screaming, more romance, <laughs> I strangely enough wasn't dissatisfied with this subtle, tender, and sweet love development. Or it was because with mean characters you start to overinterpret everything he says. Like when he didn't insult you, you're so happy and immediately convinced, like, oh my god, he loves me, he didn't insult me, it's a love confession. <laughs> that non-insulting line, <laughs> once in a while. Or maybe it was because the game takes place over the course of a whole year, so you really have time to get to know each other. And though the character roots are rather short, with about four hours character roots, the development still didn't feel rushed at all. But you had many heart-to-heart -heart conversations, so the characters supporting each other and have time to figure out what they feel for each other until you finally get a kiss in the literally last second of each character route <laughs> and the plot stays tense until the credits roll and even afterwards until you are back on the until you are back on the home screen the plot is still tense Oh my god. <laughs> I've really never seen a game which had a rising tension of the plot throughout the whole game until the credit rolls and afterwards. <laughs> so yeah, the plot was dense and thick until the very end. Either because there still was a problem to be solved or you just needed to be kissed in the last second of the game. Another reason I think why the game doesn't feel rushed, despite it being rather short, is because I think the game has no descriptions actually. Every information is conveyed either in the dialogue or the CGs. So you don't have to read through inner monologue or like lengthy wordy descriptions of the scenery or what is happening, which I think makes it suitable for beginners or definitely lower intermediate learners. On top of that, the kanji are huge. <laughs> they are almost like half of the screen, so they're very easy to read. And of course the language can be a bit dated, but still it doesn't get too complicated. And especially the lack of wordy descriptions or inner monologue makes it easy to follow, the story snappy and fast paced. Overall, I think Hanayaka Nariwa ga Ichizoku <laughs> is a game if you want to experience a master-made relationship, can stand some severe bullying, and are in for a slice of life beginning and small gameplay elements, that develop into an interesting plot about family dynamics and secrets and bridging the gap between master and mate. I'm definitely interested in getting BFDs, like now. I want to know like how their relationship can develop into an equal one, but sadly this time they weren't included in the Switch board. And if you want to get a taste of what that game is like, I highly recommend you watching the short anime of it, which I talk about in this video and which practically tells the common root of the game. So if you like the short anime, chances are you'll probably like the game, which perfectly captures the life of a mate in a rich family and how to bridge the gap between master and mate.